Okay, so let's take a look at week three self-learning challenge. So this challenge is all about pre-processing data. So very often when you read data into your program, um, it might not be in the format that you want it to be in. So in order to, to get it into the right sort of format before you can use it, you need to pre-process that data. So an example of this is in um, the, lab, the lab in example two, where we conducted a, a simple linear regression to assess the relationship between two variables. It turns out that's problematic and the data wasn't in quite in the right format um, because it's time series data. So we won't go into the theory of time series, um, but what we do need to know is that we need to detrend this data. We need to take the first difference. Um, and we've got a formula here that tells us what it means by the first difference. So um, in our difference data set, we've got a point yt, and that equals yt plus one minus y from the original time series data set. And also we've got a tip that if an array A has length n, then an array of the first difference of A is n minus one. So how do we go about solving this? So um, I can tell you what I did. Um, so I steamed ahead and wrote some code to do it. Uh, so what I did was I copied the code over from example two. Um, so I've got the load detox data set function, which returns two NumPy arrays, breach and detox, which is our data. Um, and I've got the detox regression function, which uses stats models to run the regression um, and output it to the screen. So let's just run that as a reminder. So here's our nicely formatted linear regression results. And if we have a look at our adjusted R squared, that's very high and suggests that there is a strong linear relationship between those two variables. <coughs> so what did I do? So the first thing I did was I thought, well, I've got a nice equation there. Um, I've been learning about loops, so um, I can write my own function to do this detrending to take the first difference. So I created a function called detrend, where I'm passing in the time series. Um, I've then created a new NumPy array called diff, which is basically um, the length of the time series minus one. And then I'm gonna loop through diff, uh, loop through the time series um, array and take the first difference. So to do that, that's really straightforward. So let's do a for loop for i in range and we want to go diff dot shape. Okay, so for every, basically we've got a, a, an array here of diff and we're going to loop through the length of that array. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the first difference. So diff i, so the first time that goes through example, i is going to be zero and that equals time series i plus one minus time series i. So if the first time it goes through, that'll be um, zero, diff, diff of zero equals time series point um, one, uh, the point at index one minus time series, the point at index zero. And that's the difference. Uh, and that's all you need to do. So what I'm then going to do is uh, we've loaded the data here, breach and detox. So I'm going to take the first difference of those. I'm going to create a new variable called dbreach, which stands for difference of breach. And I'm going to call the dtrend function. And I'm going to pass in my breach data set, my breach numpy array. So what's happening there is in goes my breach numpy array to the dtrend function. That's going to use a for loop to loop through that array and create the first difference and then it's going to return a new numpy array which I'm calling d breach and then I'm going to do the same with the detox so I'll call the dtrend function and press in detox and then when I call my linear regression function my detox regression instead of passing in the original data sets I'm going to pass in the pre-processed data sets and let's run that Okay, so we get, our, we get our new regression results. And now we can see that our adjusted R squared 
is very low. So it looks like the relationship between those two variables was probably um, due to non-stationarity and trend within the data, which can cause a spurious correlation between two variables. So what I did there was I, I wrote my own function. Um, and there's a lesson in that, in that you can solve things um, yourself, um, but also sometimes uh, we shouldn't steam ahead and write our own function. We should sit back and perhaps do a bit of searching on the internet first to see, is there a NumPy function that does things for you? So I had a quick look. Um, so I've searched under NumPy first difference array and top hit is um, from the SciPy docs and there's a function called NumPy diff. So if we have a look at that, um, we can see it calculates the uh, nth discrete difference along the given axis. So the first difference is given by um, out n equals a, which is the, the input um, data set, n plus 1 minus 1 minus n. So basically it's exactly the same function as I've just coded. In fact, this is much more flexible. Um, so I didn't need to write my own code. I, I could have saved the 10 minutes or so it took me to think of that and I could have just quickly googled this and found that there's a numpy diff function and I could have called that instead. So if we go back to our code and instead of calling the dtrend function, um, what I'm going to call is the numpy.diff function and pass in those data sets. Okay, and this is going to do exactly the same thing. So by default, it takes the first difference and let's run that code. And there we go. We get exactly the same answer. So multiple ways to solve the challenge this week. You could have coded it yourself. Um, however, I'll, uh, I think uh, extra brownie points goes to people that realize you could have just Googled this and found that there's a nice NumPy function, which is probably much more efficient um, that can do this for you.